Do you know why we need loading screens? I mean, you probably want one, you know, that's why you're watching the video. I remember I clicked on this game, right? And then like, you know, it just logged me in, no problem. And literally like half of the th stuff was invisible, right? You probably don't want that. So let's make our loading screen. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use a thing called a content provider, which is a service, right? And that will let us basically wait until every single item in the game is like fully loaded right so we're gonna do that i'm gonna make a, a like a local script inside replicated first the reason we're gonna be using replicated first not replicated storage is because you know this the stuff in replicated first will be replicated to the clients first and then will come all the other stuff right um and then inside of that script i'm actually gonna place like the gui for the loading screen and then when a player joins, we're going to give them that GUI. So we're going to clone the GUI, give it to them. And then we're just going to like, like change the text of the GUI to say like how much assets we have loaded. And once we've loaded all of the assets, then we will, you know, let the player into the game. Easy. So let's make a local script, which I'll just name loading script. You know, always, always nice to have this stuff. So the first thing we, I want to do is add a variable for the content uh, provider, right? So I'll say local content provider is equal to game colon get service content provider and what content provider does uh like i i i just told you right but like you're able to we're going to be using preload async so what this does is it, is it just waits until like the assets that we give it um have all loaded right so pretty simple so we have the content provider right the next thing we, we should do is actually make the gui probably right so I'll, I'll just make it in starter gui so we can see it and then once we're fully done with it, we'll put it inside the script, right? So it's GUI, screen GUI, frame. Yeah, I'm just going to, I'll scale it to the screen. So a 1, 0, 1, 0 for size will scale it to fit the full screen. Um, and then I'm going to, on the screen GUI, uh, set ignore GUI inset to be true. And what this does is, you know how like when you play Roblox, there's these like, like buttons on top. If this is false, then the GUI will like respect the inset and it, it will not cover those buttons, right? But then if we ignore it, it's going to cover the buttons, meaning it's going to cover the full screen, which is what we want, which is why I have this thing to true, because we're ignoring it. Uh, then in the frame, this is going to be a very basic screen. It's not going to be nothing special. I'll set the size to be 0 0.4, 0, 0, 0, 0.4, 0. Again, you can mix whatever you want. I'll position it to the middle. I'm going to set the font to be, I don't know, I'll just... <laughs> everyone uses the font right the same for, for doco for doco one font i don't know something it's it's stupid you know like I, I remember i saw my siblings playing these like simulator games and all of them have the same font and it, to the point where i thought they were playing the same game but it was like 10 different games um okay so yeah the reason i put zero out of zero um is because that's where, that, that's like the template we're gonna be using for the text right so it's gonna be the amount of assets we've loaded over here and then the amount of assets we have to load in total over here so th th these are going to be the max assets these are going to be the amount of assets we've already loaded right pretty simple so i'll take this gui i'm gonna you know just copy it delete it and then i'm gonna paste it inside the script and the way you paste uh like in, in roblox inside an item is you hold shift then control then v right or if you're on mac shift command and v because if you just do control v or command v it puts it inside workspace which is kind of weird even if you have like if, even if i have the script selected it still puts it inside workspace. So to put inside, just hold shift and then control and V, right? Pretty simple. So then I'm going to make a variable for the UI. So I'll say local UI is equal to uh, script, I guess, wait for child, screen GUI, like so. Uh, clone. So we're going to clone it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, we, we want to just wait until the game begins, right? So we're going to say repeat, wait. So we're just going to keep waiting until game colon, I think it's like is, is loaded. Yeah. So we're going to just keep waiting until the game is loaded. And what is loaded means is like, just is the game st just started, right? This, this does not mean that everything will be loaded. It's just that the game just started and is now beginning to load, which is where we're going to start introducing like, you know, the content provider and the GUI and everything. So, okay, now we've ensured that the game is loaded. Uh, then we want to actually get the player. So I'll say local PLR is equal to game dot uh, players dot local player. And then I'll get the player's GUI. So I'll say local player GUI is equal to player, wait for child, player GUI. 
So just like starter GUI, every player has a thing in, inside of them called player GUI. And then if we put the GUI inside of that, then they will see the loading screen, right? Pretty simple. Um, so yeah, player with shot player GUI. Yeah, there we go. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to parent um, the UI to the player, right? So I'll say, okay, UI dot parent is equal to player GUI, right? So we're going to parent it to the player GUI. And then now what we're going to do is I we want to get the total amounts of stuff that's inside of the game. So we want to get literally everything that's over here, like everything, right? Yeah, all, all of the children, all of the descendants, we want to get all of this, uh, which I'll probably do after the game is loaded. Yeah, so after the game began, we want to get all the assets. So what I'll do is I'll say local assets is equal to game colon get descendants. So this will get everything that's inside of the game. So th th this is like a table. So this will return a table of everything in the game. And then we also want to get how many, like the number of assets we have, because we want to actually showcase that on our loading screen. We want to show like the maximum amount of assets we have to load. So I can do a local max assets, and this will just be equal to hashtag assets, like so. Because when you put a hashtag in front of a table, it just tells you like the number of items that are in the table. So max asset, so max assets is equal to like a number, which represents the amount of values that's inside the game, right? Just the entire game. Um, yeah, so with that done, what, what we should do now is we should loop through all of these assets, right? And then we should use content provider and wait until every asset has loaded. And then once, you know, we, we, we've ensured that it's loaded, then we update, you know, the text on the loading screen. Like we say like, okay, 10 assets out of, you know, however much we have, or like, or like now 20 assets loaded, 30 assets loaded, 100 assets loaded, right? Um, so that's what I'll do. So I'll make a four, I comma, we could do V, we could do, um, I'll just, I'll just call it asset to load, more simple. So for, for, so I will represent the amount of times we've already looped, right? So, so we're going to make I equal the first letter of the, of the GUI. So as you may remember in the text label, we have, yeah, zero to zero. So the first, the first number is going to be the amount of assets we've already loaded which is going to be the I because that's how many times we've looped already. And then the final number will be the maximum amount of assets, which is going to be this max assets variable. So for I asset to load in assets do. So we're going to loop through the assets and then we first, we need to wait. We need to wait for the content provider to actually tell us, okay, this asset is fully loaded. We're going to say content provider colon preload async. And then it needs a table of the instance or like the instances that we want to actually load, which right now is asset to load, right? So I'll, I'll make a table and I'll just put asset to load inside of it. So then it's going to wait until this has fully loaded. And then once that's done, we're going to go to the next piece of code, which all we're going to do is just, we're going to change the text of this text label. So I'll say UI because we, we still have it, right? Uh, UI, I guess, wait for child frame wait for child text label dot text is going to be equal to so we want the i first so we want the i then i'm going to add two dots uh, to connect it with a string so it's going to be the number and then it's going to be added to the string so it's going to be number slash and then we want the max number which is the max assets so i'll say max assets there we go so we're loading so so like we're looping through the asset we're waiting for the asset to be finished to you know finish loading and then we basically just like Put, yeah, we update the text so that now I is going to be the number of times we've looped. So if, we, if we've already looped through two assets, this is going to be two because like obviously we have already loaded two assets. So it's an accurate number. Um, and then once that's done, we could probably like just wait like one second, right? J just just to let the player know, okay, yeah, yeah. Like j just so in case like some players have fast computers and like everything loads it like instantly. So it's going to be like a weird like blink where like, oh, it's like shows up for a split second and then disappears. It's going to look weird. So we're just going to wait for one second. Um, and then we're just going to destroy the UI. So UI destroy. There we go. So let's see if this works. So if I play the game right now. Yep. Beautiful. There we go. So we have... It in, see, instantly loads all of them. Boom. Just like that. Wonderful. 
Um, now, there are obviously a couple uh, of things you can, you can do with this. I actually will add a comment right now, um, like this. So I will say, uh, loading began, and this will be loading ended, right? So this is where we actually begin, like the loading screen process. This is where we end it. So you can actually do many things with this, right? Uh, I know some people who, what they do is before actually waiting for all the assets to load, they like wait like a, like a, a, a bit to kind of like show the player the screen and it like, let me show you, right? Because if we play the game right now, it kind of already starts like halfway, right? Which is it's sort of like, this is, this is very stupid logic from a lot of people. I don't get why they do this, but in case you think that looks a little bad, what some people do, and I don't really like this myself, but what they do is, you know, they, they set the text to be equal to, um, like, I don't know, like, like one asset out of the max assets. And then they wait for like, like 0 0.5 seconds, right? So they set the text, they wait, and then they begin loading the assets. So what you get is this. So you see the screen and then it loads, um, which just adds on like an extra 0 0.5 seconds you know, to the player's waiting time, which I don't really get why you would do that. But if you want to, I guess. What some people also do is they put a wait over here while they're loading the assets. So like a very small number, right? But then you know how like when the assets are loading, it like happens almost instantly. Like it go, it jumps from like one to like 1,200, like in, just, just like that. What this does is it makes it seem like, oh, we're like going through the assets like one by one. You can see the number increase like, like, like this. Which, you know, some people do like, but like, do you see that I would have already been in the game by now, right? So please do not use this for your game. Um, I guess this is, this is fine though. Like if you just want to, if you just want them to kind of see your loading screen for a little bit and then start actually, you know, loading all the assets, that's fine. You know, 0 0.5 seconds won't really hurt. Um, and then you, you could either destroy it or you could like have a tween where like it like kind of you know, uh, goes like trans, like, you know, go goes invisible in like a second and then you can destroy it. Um, again, all of this is up to you, right? The idea here is that just, we have a script and then when the player joins, you know, this, the game get, replicates the script and the GUI to the player. And then the script is like, okay, wait until the game's loaded. We get all the assets. We get the player, player GUI. We put the GUI into the player. Then we, as we're loading all the assets, we're updating the GUI to show the player like all of the assets that you know we've uploaded, and then we're going to you know do this, yeah. And then we're gonna finish that, and we're gonna wait a bit, and then we're gonna destroy the UI, and now the player can just play the game properly. Awesome. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. So I'll delete the uh, loading scripts. I think that is everything. Yep. Uh, go to the comments. I'm. I have a thing where like if you if you give me your personal information, your private security info, as in your email, <laughs> I will like email you stuff from time to time. So you might want to check that out. But yeah, um, that's basically everything. And we're back to basics. Thank you for watching.